Okay, guys, I'm back after that little flash that just happened. Okay, so I think that we're now seeing a lot of anomalies. We were talking about how we define the paradigm of this, you know, Mandela effect, and we're using the internet a lot to do research, right? Because that's what you initially would do to see whether or not this cereal box was always named fruit, F-R-O-O-T, or if it, it will acknowledge that it was um, once named fruit. Well, we've, you know, F-R-U-I-T. Well, we've seen that you see traces of that being used. And so people oftentimes refer to as the traces from a, the old paradigm. And, you know, yeah, it could be. Um, and I was going along with that. But then I've just noticed it's just too much flip-flopping. Like things are one way, then they seem to flip-flop back. Or, um, um, just crazy anomalies are happening with the internet, right? Where um, one minute you go there and you find something, you go back to try to find the same thing and it just doesn't even exist. Stuff like that's happened to me. So then I got to thinking, should we actually be using the very paradigm the, or the very uh, mechanism that's susceptible to encoding to this D wave computer to you know um, all these other technologies that can be affected not to mention just the people who own Google can go on there and change things and then we're using that to try to find information or documentation to support our point I mean I think almost we got to move away from that some kind of way because it almost just doesn't make sense does it um, and I'm noticing that with things like, um, for instance, one thing, um, this whole thing now with Moses with horns, okay? So, I personally don't remember Moses with horns, his statues. I'm an art history major, I'm a history major, and I've, you know, uh, have with an emphasis in art history, studied that stuff a lot, I just don't remember a statue of Moses with horns. Not to mention that I come from a like a deep, deep down, you know, in the roots Christian family. You know, I've said this before. My granddaddy was a archbishop, for God's sake, and what have you. And the only thing that I knew coming up that had horns was the devil. And they were quick to describe what the devil looked like. It would seem to me if Moses was depicted with horns in classical literature in sculptures by Leonardo da Vinci and stuff I mean by Michelangelo and stuff like that they would have had to explain that off they had to explain it like Ricky definitely said that his claim he don't say now <laughs> they'd have to explain it because you'd have to understand well how come Moses got horns you know now the story now is that when he came down from the Ten Commandments um, he, he God transformed him into these and gave him these horns because they were a sign of wisdom and blah 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 but what's interesting when I back, went back and did some deeper research this started this only happened like two or three years hundred years after so it was AD after Christ's death so that's when this so-called depiction of Moses with horns began through this transfiguration okay fine so when I went back and looked at the sculpture of Michelangelo um, Moses with the horns I don't know about y'all but it looks like them horns were stuck on his head by an amateur I have seen the statues of and I've seen that I swear I've seen it but I can't a hundred percent say the day I was there I looked and he didn't have horns I would think that when I was in Rome looking at this thing, if I saw the horns, I might say, huh, that's kind of crazy, but okay, you all can't go on that by me just saying it, right? I have seen Michelangelo's David. His work is spellbinding. It's almost like it transfixes you to the point when I actually saw the real David, I sat down and weeped. It really touched me emotionally. This is the work of Michelangelo. So when I looked at 
this, you know, I went back and did a little research and I saw with the horns. Some horns look like somebody took some clay and went boom, 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 boom. It almost like you can see the finger marks in it. Go look at it and tell me if you don't. And it stuck them on his head kind of strange like. Meanwhile, this sculpture of Moses was pivotal because Michelangelo depicted, I mean, the hair looks like he used a paintbrush in his beard. It looks like he painted the marble. This is how delicate his work is. His and Moses is muscular. The see the you can almost do have an anatomy class on the musculature underneath the skin of this sculpture. But these horns just look like some kid just took some play doh and stuck it on top of his head. I just can't imagine if, in fact, Michelangelo was depicting Moses in his transfiguration. Those horns would look like horns, not little two little goo balls of Play-Doh stuck on top of his head. I'm sorry. I have studied a lot of art, a lot of sculptures and stuff like that. That just does not look like, that don't look right to me. Um, then I came across, so let me go find the writing of some of this. So I went to see the description of it. In three instances, historically, that sculpture was... Um, Describe and nowhere did it describe the horns. Even Sigmund Freud has been, it's been written that he spent like three weeks or some long period of time just face to face with Moses, just studying the implications of how, you know, what was going on with Michelangelo's Moses and what have you. And he describes it from the curling of the beard to all of this stuff and never describes the horns. His, it's not, his account does not describe horns. Don't you think Sigmund Freud would have described these horns? I would, because I think he would definitely be all into the underlying implication of all of that. So, um, yeah, so I guess the point I'm making here, and I just wanted to bring that up as an example for you to go check it out, is that they could go back and mess with the same stuff, the descriptions of it, how, you know, the, um, what, I mean, on some places you cut, look it up, it meant, horns meant wisdom, um, you know, in the Greek mythology, it meant that, it, it meant that, I do agree that things have changed. And a lot of the they's that have changed stuff have changed really critical meanings. So the stuff that like 666 does not mean something demonic, but it's been changed to mean that. If you go far enough back, it didn't mean that. So I'm with everybody on that. Don't get me wrong. What I'm saying is that they can, if they can change labeling, they can go back and wiki, wiki, Wikipedia and, and all these sources and change it too. Then it brought me to the idea that some of these changes, since it's been well documented and acknowledged that time travel has been on the table for a long time. What about this? What about if the people that are playing with, I do believe that there is a true Mandela effect happening. Don't get me wrong, because I'm looking at things that are not easily manipulated, like the solar system, like the way I sense and feel about things. Um, like um, the changes in people around you and stuff like that. That's stuff that so much computer can't change unless you have MK Ultra and you just got everybody hypnotized into doing uh, being a certain kind of way. And I guess we can't rule that out either, right? But whatever. Um, but when you, but certainly written stuff and stuff that's on a computer and things like that can be changed. Now, things that are changing inside of Bibles and physical books. Well, if you think about time travel, I guess they could go back and alter the Bible at the place, at the point it was being printed so that everything moving forward would then show this alteration, right? So somebody could go back and take some little putty and stick it on Mike Michelangelo's David, a poor job of it. Now he's got horns, I mean, not David, of uh, Moses and have horns. You see where I'm going with this, guys? There is so many possibilities to explain this thing. That the only thing I think we really can do is go on our gut. You know, you got to go on really what things feel like and search for the answers or in an organic form. We just can't use the internet any longer to support our theories or to disprove someone else's theories. I just don't know how that's possible moving forward, especially as much as the internet 
seems to be changing. I don't know what your thoughts on this, guys. I'm just throwing out a lot of stuff right now. I know it. But these are the things I think about. This is what's going through my mind. I don't have any answers, right or wrong, up or down. All I know is that we've got to figure it out, of course. And some kind of way, those of us who are coming at this like this, you know, we are the community. And, you know, we're just having conversations among ourselves the same way if we were sitting in the same room, we've been having conversations. So this is just a conversation around um, how we're defining our paradigms. And we have to be careful to be consistent. We can't use the internet to prove our theories and then turn around and use it to disprove someone else's. <laughs> and I don't even think people are thinking about that's what they're doing, but that's happening a lot. So I'm just throwing it out there. Alrighty, signing off. Peace out.